You ran out onto Legion Field for the first time as head coach of Alabama. What was going through your mind? Well, it was an exciting time for me, certainly, uh, Mike, and I'm sure for the players because both the players and the coaching staff and myself have been working for such a long time for this, uh, for this time to get the 1983 season underway. Georgia Tech had the football first, and right off, the defense caused a turnover. Well, we felt like uh, we were pretty pleased with the way the defense played all day. We felt like we had to play well because we felt like uh, with their receivers coming back and their quarterback, Stu Rogers, uh, we felt like it was going to be hard to contain a passing game and a great running back like Robert LeVette also. Emmanuel King forced it, and there on the recovery you saw a moment ago was Randy Edwards, and this is Ricky Moore as the team was taking it in. Ricky Moore made some real tough, real good runs all day. And here is uh, Joe Carter catching the pass from Walter Lewis, taking it in for the touchdown. Now, what goes through a coach's mind here is, hey, you scored too quick. They might get a feeling that it's going to be easy, and you certainly don't want that to happen. It can, and uh, it does happen on some occasion. I'm not saying that's what happened yesterday, but we just did not sustain anything from there. Robert Lovett, who ran right there, and he ran pretty well yesterday. Well, he's a great running back, and we knew that. And we knew the, to stop their offense and to have a chance to win, we had to, we had to put the brakes on Robert Lovett because he is a great running back. They're taunting him for the Heisman Trophy this year, and uh, we felt like we had to get a good pass rush on this gentleman right here and Stu Rogers, their quarterback. Manuel King batting down that pass there. He took quite a few, uh, quite a few licks throughout the ball game. This is a tight end taking a good shot there, but uh, Stu Rogers took uh, quite a few licks. And overall, we were pleased with the pass rush and the pressure that we did get on him. They missed a 42-yard field goal, and the ball goes over to Alabama. Can't move the football. Malcolm Simmons into punt. Overall, uh, in our kicking game, we made some big plays in our kicking game, uh, especially there in the second half, a uh, block punt. But overall, our kicking game, our kickers, uh, we're fortunate to have some real good kickers and Malcolm Simmons and uh, Terry Sanders and punting. And Terry Sanders handles our kickoffs for us. And uh, Van Tiffin, we felt like, for his first time out, did an excellent job on the, on the two field goals that he made for us. They have to punt, and Alabama will get the football back. Ball is down on the 30-yard line, and once again, it'll be Ricky Moore, who, as you said, Coach, had a good day running he yesterday. He had a real good day. All of our running backs uh, who carried the football had good days. Uh, Lenny Patrick had an exceptional day. Kerry Goode there late in the game. Uh, here's Lenny taking off on one of his uh, uh, runs right here. Uh, he had 88 yards and something like 9 or 10 carries. Uh, Ricky Moore is a big, bruising, tough fullback here. It bounces loose here, and we're heads up. Uh, uh, Greg Turner's heads up and grabs the ball here and recovers the fumble. But... Uh, I didn't realize it until after the game. Look at the stats. We had five fumbles, but we only lost one. You know, that's something that you don't, you can't tell real good from the sidelines. Here again, our offense stalls, and we're forced to punt <clears throat> in the end zone for a touchback. Uh, overall, uh, we were not pleased uh, with the way that our offense uh, uh, lacked the consistency to drive the football and score points. But when we had to there in the fourth quarter, keep the defense off the field because they were, they were really tired. We're in the second quarter now, and after scoring so early, the score is still seven to nothing. Well, seven to nothing, and we had some opportunities there in the first half, Mike. We had two or either three opportunities there in the first half where we've got the ball down around scoring territory about the plus 25 yard line or inside and failed to come out with touchdowns. We met a one missed field goal or, or had to settle for a field goal. But uh, here's Lenny Patrick making a real good run after a catch of a screen pass one more time there. But uh, I'm confident that our offense will get, get it better. It will improve because our players are, we have some talented players, and our players are really eager, interested in, in trying to accomplish what we're asking them to. After this play here, the offense will stall, and Van Tiffen will come on. He had a good day, I thought, yesterday. He'll miss his first attempt, but after that, he was perfect. Yeah, he is a real good kicker. Uh, to be a young kicker, a freshman, uh, a freshman walk-on at that, you know. Uh, he is one of the best young kickers, if not the best young kicker that I've ever seen. Here's Robert Levette again. It's one of his patented runs. This is one of the plays that tossed to the strong side that hurt us all day almost. We cut it down pretty much in the second half, but they're in the first half. They really hurt us with it. There's Make Levette a good play right here. This is, Billy, uh, this is Billy Pierce, our strong safety, coming in from his strong safety spot, making a great play. They are forced to punt, and once again, Alabama will get the football back in the second quarter. Score is still seven to nothing. Here's Walter Lewis. He's coming back to pass. I think he's going to hit the tight end. This is when Jesse no, Bendros was Jesse called for Bendros running out of bounds. Called for running out of bounds and coming back in and catching the football. But in just a moment, Jesse Bendros was not out of bounds. It was the longest pass play of the day. 53 yards from Walter Lewis to Jesse Bendros coming up right here. This is on the scramble play. 
has to has to has to run out of the pocket quick to avoid a uh, a rusher, and he uh, he's got real good vision. Walter does, and he keeps his head up field like he's supposed to do and hits it for a big play. Now here comes the interception, and Walter Lewis would end up making the tackle and causing the fumble on Jack Westbrook, number 22. Well, this is uh, Jack Westbrook is one of their best football players. Uh, probably their best defensive football player at the strong safety spot. And uh, he tricked Walter a little bit. We were talking about it on the sideline. There's a good tackle right there. Walter should be playing linebacker the way he made <laughs> that hit. But uh, uh, he tricked Walter a little bit uh, in that uh, Walter felt like he had the throwing lane there to the, uh, to the wide receiver for a touchdown, and, uh, and he comes right in front and picks it off. But Walter makes a great play in the tackle there. From 45 yards out, Van Tiffin, rather 39 yards out. Van Tiffin is uh, field goals up and good, and it's 10 to nothing in the second half. Ste 39 first half. yards out, and he's going to hit some from much further, believe me, because he is very accurate, and uh, he's, he's very accurate from long distances. Here's Lavette again with that same type toss play back to, the, back to the tight end side and into the short side of the field. Stu Rogers is a fine quarterback. You know, we knew very little about him going into the football game. And here's a fumble by their tight end after a catch. But we knew very little about Stu Rogers going into the game. Uh, but we, we, he's made believers out of us on that day. You know, if we didn't keep the pressure on him that we kept on him, he could really give us headaches. This next pass to Ricky Moore. Ricky. Uh, this or is, is it to Greg great Richardson? Effort, it was just, great it was effort great by effort Greg, Greg anyway. Richardson. We had put, in, put Greg in. He was he had some fresh legs on him, but uh, it was a great effort by, by Greg Richardson. And Alabama goes into the locker room at halftime with the lead over Georgia Tech of 10 to nothing. Well, Mike, it's, uh, it's a 10 to nothing game, but coming out the second half, I made sure I told the players, let's play it like we're behind. Because in that first half, we were lucky. We made some mistakes, uh, and it's, it's a matter of what kind of field position we were in when we made them that we got away with them. We were... Uh, a little sluggish and we're unable to move the ball consistently on the offense and get it in the end zone for touchdowns. Our defense played well. We kept a uh, good rush on the passer for the most part in the first half. We uh, pretty much shut down uh, their running back, Robert Levette. And, uh, you know, it was mu pretty much a defensive game and, and also a kicking game. Let's pick up the action now in the third quarter. Coach Perkins, did you make any big adjustments to start the second half? Well, not really. We made adjustments a little bit defensively and, and a few things offensively based on what they were doing, but they did just about the, the same type of things that they did in their last three or four ball games, which we had in our scouting report. Uh, you know, they had a, a couple of change-up, which, uh, which is to be expected, and I'm, I'm sure that they found that we had, too. There's the 45-yard field goal by Van Tiffen. As you said, Coach, it looks like he's going to be a great kicker for several years Very to come. accurate, and he is. He's going he's to be a super kicker, and he's going to help us win a lot of ball games. That time, the toss to the left was yep. stopped very well. Shutting it down there, Roosevelt Hill coming out from his inside linebacker spot to stop him. Roosevelt Hill, the leading tackler of the defense for Alabama yesterday. Well, he's our signal caller. Here's a, here's a great uh, block by Todd Roper, and we teach our people to scoop, and it's, uh, they had a lot of discipline right there, and here's Stan Gay uh, scooping it up and running it in for a touchdown. That's the biggest play of the day in the entire ball game. How important to you is to make big plays happen on the kicking game? Well, I think, it's, I think it's very important because I think you can hit a long field goal, like a 45, 48-yard field goal. Uh, you can block a punt. Uh, just the block punt, not pick it up and run it in for a touchdown, but just the block punt itself has a big mental effect on the opposing team. Every time I turned around, Emmanuel King was in there on Stu Rogers. He it had sure a good was. day. was. Randy Edwards right there with him, number 96. They just, they just did a great job all day putting pressure and, ru and rushing the passer. Robert Here's Robert Levette going in from one yard out, and they had about three or four plays there right inside the five-yard line, and that's really a tough situation there on a little bit less than a yard, and he, and he squeezed it in there. 12.34 to go, and really they had time to get back into the ball game as Stu Rogers started completing some passes, but a big play there by Stan Gay. Stan Gay makes a great play right here. It's a, it's a situation where they have to pick up a first down or punt, and he makes the play when he has to and forces them to punt. Now, this is the beginning of the long, sustained drive, highlighted by a couple of good runs by Lenny Patrick. Well, starting on the, on the minus 30-yard line, and this is a point in the game where our defense has been on the field quite a while uh, throughout the ball game, and we've played and we've subbed, and we had some injury situations in our linebacking core going into the ball game. So it's very important for us to take the ball and run the ball and let the clock run 
and keep our defense on the sideline and at the same time keep the football and run a lot of time off the clock. Here's a big, big play, the biggest play in this drive. We had just gotten a penalty, which put us in like a second and 20 or 22 situation. And uh, it was a reverse to Lenny Patrick, and uh, we pick up the first down. And here's Kerry Good, the freshman. Uh, Kerry's got exceptional speed, and he's smart, he's tough, he's got real good hands. I just think he's, 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 the, he's the player that's going to be a great one. Three carries for 24 yards yesterday, his longest one right there of 13 yards down to the one-yard line. You know, our offense showed a lot of character. Right here is uh, Greg Turner fumbling on the one-yard line. He's carrying the ball like a loaf of bread there a little bit, but, uh, and, and Greg felt, felt real bad about it. But even though we fumbled the football there, we should have had a touchdown in the thing. But we kept it <clears throat> and kept our defense off the field, gave them a big rest, and kept the football and, and ran some time off the clock. Once again, that defensive line, Mike Rodriguez there batting the ball down. Batting the ball down, quarterback caught his own pass. Dewberry in there at quarterback now. Stu Rogers is out of the ball game. He's injured. Well, as we said earlier, Stu took quite a few pops during the course of the game, and our defense played exceptionally well, putting pressure and, 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 and rushing the passer. Coach, here at this point of the game, is your defense laying back a little well, bit? Trying... Laying back, laying back right here, because in this situ situation right there where, uh, <clears throat> where we make the interception, uh, Freddie Robinson makes the interception, they have to go to the end zone because there's 17 seconds on the clock. And here, Walter Lewis will fall on the football, and Let your victory is in. And our first victory, and, and, and we're just awfully proud of our young men for the way that they reacted in this their uh, first ball game of 1983. Game number one is now history. Coach Perkins, your thoughts as you look back? Well, I'm certainly uh, certainly happy that we won it. Any uh, any victory is a is a great win, and a good win. But we have to realize from a team standpoint. Uh, some of the things that we did, some of the mistakes that we made, uh, some of the play that we played, uh, we can't play that way and make the mistakes that we made and hope to win every game. Uh, we had uh, some penalties in some key situations that we can't have. Uh, we didn't move the football with the efficiency uh, and consistency that we sh should and have to to, uh, to win in, uh, in the SEC and uh, the teams that we will be facing uh, in the future down the road and to make the progress and and kind of keep an uphill grade, so to speak, as far as improvement through the course of the year to get where we want to get to. Again, congratulations on your first victory as Alabama's head coach. Thank you, Mike. We had beautiful... And we'll be back next week at this same time with highlights of the Ole Miss game. Until then, so long, everybody. <laughs>